Welcome to our Facebook Live with our Belgian MEP Mark Boutanga from uh, PDB, Pivot Dea, uh, the, the, the Belgian Workers' Party. I think, uh, let's uh, put it this way, it's easiest for all those who are non Flemish or French speakers. Um, now, you're here and we're talking to you because of this petition that you have launched because of the coronavirus, the COVID 19, and specifically about the vaccine for. Uh, this virus. Tell us more about it. Well, there's a bit of worry uh, we've got, uh, and that big worry is that uh, private multinational companies might become, um, let's say, the owner of this vaccine, right? So they may get the property rights, uh, intellectual property rights, uh, patents as we call them, on this vaccine. And that worries us because that would mean that they would, in the end, decide on the offer. Uh, on the supply and on the price of this vaccine, which we think is completely unfair. You know, in the face of a pandemic, we consider that everyone should have access to, you know, the, the, the life-saving medicines or, or vaccines whatsoever. So we want to avoid that private pharmaceutical multinationals get the right, the monopoly right on this vaccine. And that is, you know, the European Commission can make that happen. So that's good news. Um, the bad news is that for the moment that's not happening. So we want to put pressure and, you know, it, 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 it's, it's a wonderful initiative. You know, there's a, you know, the, 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 the group of the European left and 13 other parties. So it, it's wonderful. Because the petition is addressed specifically at the Commission President Ursula von der Leyen and she hasn't actually said anything about vaccine strategy. So, so naturally, you have concerns given the way the Commission always goes in the past. Exactly. Well, you know, she, she's talked about, she's mentioned it in, 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 in like, the first communications were quite good. She's being like, the vaccine should be our universal common good. You know, that sounds really good. And, 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 and I agreed with her, you know, wholeheartedly. Um, the thing is, then she came up with this vaccine strategy, strategy for vaccines, uh, European uh, strategy for vaccines. And I looked at that and I saw there's actually no guarantee whatsoever regarding intellectual property rights or patents. You know, there is where well, we will negotiate, we will buy stuff and so on. And we were very worried because of that. We were like, OK, no, you know, if you talk the talk, you need to walk the walk and take the measures. You've got it in your, in, in, in your ability, in your, uh, your rules, you know, you're able to do it. So, uh, you know. What are you waiting for? Because in the past, I think the big pharma companies, the big pharmaceuticals is uh, the one you're alluding to, they, they brought up the, the pat patents and licenses and the rights to, I think, HIV and malaria in places like South Africa until Nelson Mandela intervened. But this is a pandemic that no one can control at the moment. And, and, and this is why exclusivity over vaccines is really not working in the favor of the public. No, it would, be, uh, it would be a disaster, I think. I mean, first of all, you need to know that no company today is able to produce enough of the vaccines. You know, we only have candidate vaccines, but no company has enough uh, production capacity to actually produce it for everyone, right? Yeah. And we know that as long as, you know, there's not, not everyone has access, you know, there'll be risks for public health. But, I mean, the, the, the cases you mentioned, I, I like to take two separate cases. Like, there's one is the polio vaccine. Yes. You know, the polio vaccine, which uh, came out in the 50s and uh, which was, you know, at the time, it was a specter hunting the United States and many parts of the world, children getting paralyzed and so on. Uh, and so the inventor, Jonas Salk, an American uh, scientist, he said, you know, he was asked on television, like, so who does this, uh, this, 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 this belong to, you know? Who gets the rights on this? And he looked at, he smiled, he looked as like, well, the people, I would say, I mean, can you patent the sun? And I, I like that. I'm like, this is a good philosophy because we all have the right. You know, it's like we all have the right to sunlight and to, you know. And so in this way as well, you know, we all have the right to the vaccine. <clears throat> the opposite case is the AIDS, AIDS HIV, uh, where indeed uh, patents and intellectual property rights blocked access uh, for at least a decade in Southern Africa. And so Nelson Mandela had to take on pharmaceutical companies and their rights, their monopolies, in order to get decent prices because millions of people were dying from that, right? That was also a, a big epidemic. And so these two cases are basically the choice we're faced with. You know, do we give it to them or do we take it in public hands? Because it's, it's also interesting that developed countries are scrambling to get exclusivity over this at the, at the expense of the, of the global south or developing countries. But also we've found out that speculators are buying up shares in big pharma companies. Uh, they've gone up by 34% on the Dow Jones index between March and May. And that 
these big pharma companies regularly abuse the patents, uh, pat patents and licenses by prolonging them illegally. Mm -hmm. And of course, you know, we all heard what uh, Donald Trump said at the beginning of the pandemic, saying, you know, we'll buy up uh, all the pandemics, we'll buy up the, the, the exclusivity from Germany. So when you hear that, naturally, you, that, you that, that is very worried. It's, it's, it, it would be terrible. You know, let's be honest about it. Um, basically, and, and, and Euro, the European Union has kind of entered that uh, game as well, you know, that, that competition by doing the advanced purchase. Basically, what you're saying is that, okay, we accept that there will be shortages. We accept that the prices will be set by others, but we want our piece of a cake. A cake, we know, is too small. It's very right? small. Uh, rather than say, you know, this is a pandemic, this doesn't happen, thank God, every year, every 10 years, you know, let's take extraordinary, me extraordinary measures, you know, and make it available to everyone. And this is possible, you know, if you don't allow intellectual property rights or you break them open, right, then different companies can produce them and you will avoid, you can avoid shortages, maybe not completely, but at least you'll have an availability that's way bigger. And there'll be broader access because it will be less, uh, less expensive. You know, this happened to other drugs. You know, you've, at some point, India became the generic producer, you know, the producer of generic medicines for the world, it was, it was known. So, right, let's do that. And, and, and as I said, you know, Ursula von der Leyen promised it. Uh, I've heard Emmanuel Macron speak about it. I've heard Angela Merkel mention it. Okay, these are heavyweights in the European Union, right? So, you know, either... But is it PR? You know, I'm afraid it might be, but in the end, it depends on, 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 on the balance of power. You know, we know that these companies, you know, they've got uh, not just shares going up, you know, they're, they're very powerful. Uh, yes. They've got a very strong lobby here in Brussels. Very much so. <clears throat> and so what will make the difference in the end is, okay, what can we put in front of their interests? You know, they throw their weight in a battle. Can we do the same? And that is why we launched this petition, because we're saying, okay, if people mobilize, you know, and if we can get to a decent number of signatures, then the commission can see, okay, right, now I've got the pressure from the pharmaceutical companies, but the people kind of are not having it anymore, you know? So that is in, in this game, and that is why this petition at the European scale is so important. And, and this leads to my last question. Next, this, this July is the beginning of the German EU presidency. Uh, we know the Commission and the Council have issues with lobbyists and, uh, you know, it's known as a black, black box for a reason, the Council, where Merkel is on the Council along with Macron and all the other leaders. But on the other, on the other hand, you've got von der Leyen, uh, the Commission, at the hands of the German multinationals and big pharma companies. You know, we're not talking about other presidencies, mm. like the Croatian one, at the, um, which is the outgoing one, but also German companies are not small companies globally. This is true, and you know, each one will lobby for, you know, the French also have their companies and, and, and the UK and so on. And what I'm, 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 I'm seeing is that in the European industrial strategy, you know, in which obviously big countries have had a, a big say, there's this idea of creating uh, European leaders, European champions, right, that will be able to dominate the world. You know, and this like would be... Like train companies or train manufacturers, I think. Train manufacturers, uh, other things, uh, digital oh, technologies, uh, whatever. And pharmaceuticals are part of this. Mm. Because if you imagine that your company has the exclusive right, your company, and I'm not saying the people's company, you know, but, you know, a European company with European shareholders, um, which are extremely rich, like the 1%, and you know, so, so basically you're supporting them in taking over parts of the world market, right? Because obviously if you get this monopoly right on the vaccine, you'll be able, you'll be the one selling it to, I don't know, the Brazilians, you'll be the one selling it to, to, to Africa, you'll be the one selling it throughout the world, and you'll have a competitive advantage overall you know, competitors from other countries. And so the European Union, in this way, is throwing its weight behind the power of multinational companies. While I'm saying, and, and, and all of those that are, are supporting the petition, that are signing the petition, and, and that are working with it, are saying that is not right. What we should be fighting for is the right to health for everyone, right? That, I mean, health should trump profit, always. And so that is, as I said, why the petition is so important. Um, and, and to be honest, I'm optimistic. I think we can win. You know, it's a good cause, and it's a cause that's broadly shared. I think everyone can understand that there should not be profits on pandemics, you know. Health is not a commodity. Exactly. Uh, it's a public right. So uh, you can find out more about the petition or even sign the petition, obviously. I think what, what uh, Mark and uh, his colleagues would love you to do is uh, you can go to our website, gueengl.eu, or go to Mark's uh, Facebook page and his Twitter account. I'm sure they'll all be there. Thanks, Mark, for joining us. And Thank you very uh, much for watching.